The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. Life is not easy at all. Let me tell you all something. Dating for me was a little bit extra hard. Unfortunately, I had been sick with cancer not once but twice. And uh, trying to date after those other two strikes against you is never easy. And I went, and girl after girl that I would date, there was one girl in particular who actually we... This is hard, okay. There was one girl in particular that I called her up because I asked, I asked my Rebbe then, am I supposed to tell the girls before or after we, we date that I had been sick? And he said to me, you tell them when you think it's the right one. So we went out a few times. We were sitting in the car, and she said to me, the last time, the last time, no, thank God. She said to me that uh, her brother-in-law had done this with her sister-in-law when he proposed to her. The poor girl thought I was about to drop the big question. Instead, I dropped the biggest bomb in her life. And I said to her, well, to tell you the truth, before we talk about anything else, I had been sick, and I told her the whole story. That was right before Yom Kippur. I told this to her simply because I wanted her to also forgive me for having put her through what I'm about to put her through. She cried. From Erev Sukkot, right through, from Erev Yom Kippur, right through Sukkot. She needed, she told me she needed a month to call my doctors and everything else. And finally the call came. My hand was shaking. I pick up the phone and she said to me, I'm sorry. Life is hard. And that was only after I'd gotten sick once. After the second time, I figured, well, I might as well adopt a cute little puppy because <laughs> the only companionship I'm going to be uh, looking at for a while. I came out of the hospital the second time that I was sick. I actually was here in Hara Lebanon, and uh, God bless the kids minyan that I used to come to teach by. I was bald like the day I was born, that I have much on my head now, but it was worse. And the kids, it honestly it kept me going because of uh, me preparing speeches from week to week, and the kids loved it, and, and it was terrific. I came out of the hospital after the second time, and it was so difficult just thinking, what in the world am I going to do with myself? The doctors gave me a good report, but who knows? I was still bold, and I still had no control over my, over my lungs, over the track over here because of the radiation. And I had to walk around with a mask simply to catch the dribble falling out of my mouth. I get a phone call from a friend of mine, from a friend of my younger brother's friend, and he said that my sister would like to go out with your brother, Ari. In the Metsujan family, we don't, uh, we don't do well with bad things, so we just laugh at everything. All Jews really do that. Look at vaudeville. The world was crumbling apart in the 1920s, and who was there to entertain the entire country? The Jews. They made everyone laugh while everybody else was crying. It was always the Jews. So when Yossi got this phone call, my brother started laughing, and he said, are you joking me? Hi, brother. <laughs> if he goes out on a date, just the amount of saliva, his hands will slip right off the wheel. <laughs> Those are the jokes boys make. I apologize. He said, no, she would like to go out with him. So he said, all right, give Ari a month or two. Let his hair grow back a little bit. Let him, you know, get back into things, and that's what we did. We went out a few times. On the fourth date, I had enough already. Terrific girl. Everything clicked perfectly. One thing was killing me. Why are you doing this to the both of us? Why are you doing this? So finally, on the fourth date, in the car, I turned to her. I said to her, why are you doing this? I, you know my whole story. What in the world is driving you? And she said to me something that blew my mind. She said to me, Ari, if my husband is supposed to get sick in a few years down the road, that's up to Hashem. It's not up to me. Right now, I'm just looking for, for somebody who I think is great. Heaven could have fell into Kehenam. Mountains could have crumbled. Planes could have hit overhead. I went to first thing. In my deepest place, in my most horrible, darkest place, I found, I found Hashem right there. I found him laughing, pointing me right in the face and saying, Ari, <laughs> you thought everything was downhill. Boom! How are you? I'm right here. I'm right here. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.